Hello and welcome to this VSuite version 0.4 video tutorial and in this video tutorial I'm just going to cover very quickly how to set up or create Windroses with the VSuite. So I have a very similar 3D scene to my previous SunPath analysis video and I'm just going to open up my node editor um, this is a I opened up this file from you so I'm going to create a new node tree and with my vSuite node network icon selected here I'm going to add my VI location node and I'm going to add a vSuite Windrose node so the Windrose node requires location data so I connect my location node but this Windrose requires now not just a latitude and longitude but it requires hourly wind data and to provide that hourly wind data I need to shift over to energy plus weather file in this menu and then I can pick whatever weather files I have registered within my weather file directory I just got Birmingham at the moment and that will do fine so once I've selected EPW here and I have some options in my Windrows node um, this controls what kind of Windrows whether it's a histogram or a contour plot um, so I'm just going to keep on histogram 1 for the moment this here sets the day range of the year that we plot the data for so I'm just going to do 1st of January to 31st of March initially and this here is a new option within version 0 0.4 and this controls the coloration of the created windrows uh, I like jet so let's do jet first now as this was a new file and I haven't yet saved the blender file I get an error pop up saying the blender file has not been saved so I'll just save this file um, and I'm going to save it in my main blender folder so I save it now I can create Windrows and we should see now we have a Windrows object appear within the scene now just while I think about it I saved this file this blender file into my main blender directory where I save all my blender files so there are quite a few here um, but the file was called VI04 WR VO4 WR and in this directory I should have a VO sorry a VO4 WR directory as well <clears throat> and within this directory will be created all the files associated with the vSuite. That's not necessary for SunPath um, and it's not necessary for plotting out weather data which we've covered in previous videos but the Windrose is a first sort of activity within this sequence of videos that it requires um, a directory address to save files and that's the same for Livy analysis using Radiance and Envy analysis using Energy Plus. All those files that get created as part of the process get saved in this directory which is in the same directory as the where you saved your blender file um, so that was just to cover that quick point um, so in a similar way to the sun path this is just an object within the blender scene so this can be scaled and rotated and uh, moved around as desired you can create multiple wind roses so I might now go from the end of March to hmm, probably approximately midsummer um, I could change the color of this one to plasma you see those wind rose shapes are now because they cover different parts of the year they now have different shapes Um, and the other kind of key thing that kind of first 
that we first see in these sequence of videos is the new display system that VSuite version 0.4 uses. So once I've created a, a new Windrows within my VSuite display tab, I've got this Wind Metrics button. If I press that, you should see three icons appear within the 3D view. The first icon controls the coloration and the uh, wind speed bands for the latest Windrows that we created. Um, and these icons can be moved. If you click on the icon itself, the whole display element can be moved around. And with your mouse in the bottom corner, bottom right hand corner, you can scale that legend to whatever size you like. We've also got some tabular metrics, uh, which in this case shows the speed and direction, minimum, average, and maximum for the currently selected object. So this data pertains to this Windrose. If I click on this Windrose, these numbers will change to reflect that this now pertains to the um, 1st of January to 31st of March date range I selected for this one. Whereas this one is 31st of March to um, uh, end of June. And finally, we have a scatter graph of wind speed, which again is sensitive to the wind rose object that we pick. And some options appear within the VSuite display tab, and they will control which uh, metric we plot within this scatter graph and they will also control the coloration of that scatter graph. Sometimes it's not consistent all the way through the V-Suite. Sometimes a selection here will automatically change the coloration of elements and sometimes they won't. If they don't, in this case they do. Um, but sometimes if it doesn't update you need to move your mouse over the icon of the scatter window to get it to update. Um, and I think that is more or less everything I need to cover. Let me just create one final window. This is now for the whole year. And every time I create new windrows. Um, this panel gets reinitialized, so we have to press win metrics again. Um, and although this scatter graph of the wind data may not be particularly useful in all cases, because at the end of the day, wind speed and certainly wind direction can be pretty random, we can, for example, see that slight shape. Oh, that is something I forgot actually. If we, uh, if you left click on the scatter window when it's open, because this scatter graph is produced with matplotlib, then that opens up a matplotlib window, and we can then change um, the scale of our axes, and and we can save that graph. Oh, wrong button. We can save that graph as whatever we want on our uh, hard drive. It's good that I did that by accident because I've forgotten about that. And that's the case with all scatter graphs that get created in subsequent videos. Left clicking on them when they're open will open up the map, map plot live window for a little bit of further manipulation or saving an image file. Um, but what was I talking about? Yeah, we can just see here this slight band of uh, slightly higher speeds generally during the day and much more pronounced in summer and that indicates that uh, wind speeds in Birmingham in this case because that's what we have the weather file for is experiencing sort of um, kind of some warm weather kind of um, enhancement to wind speeds and I think that is definitely now everything I have to cover um, this display active button which appears at the bottom of the vSuite display tab, irrespective of what kind of display system you've got running. Um, I recommend, once you finish visualization, I'd recommend switching that off. Um, 
it can cause a crash in Blender if certain operations are done and that display system is left running. But otherwise, I think that's everything I have to talk about. Okay, thanks for watching.